Hello, welcome to another Qigong workshop with me, David Wong. And today we're going to continue our iron body training. Hope you guys like the one we did last time. And we're going to do some breathing, stretching, and training your life force energy. So we're going to increase that, increase the energy flow in your body. Remove blockages, gain strength and vitality and balance. It helps you to relax, helps you to calm and center yourself, helps you to increase your mental focus uh, and uh, increase the ability for meditation and for going into deeper states of consciousness. So while we're doing this, see if you can follow this while you're watching. It'll be good to put down your phone somewhere or put it on a stand so that you can follow along with the exercises and movements. You don't need a lot of room. You just need standing space. We're not going to be moving around. So if you have somewhere where you can stand up, if you can't stand up, if you're just sitting down, that's fine too. So let's get started. So let's start rubbing our hands together just to get the energy flowing through our hands and our fingers. There's a lot of different acupressure points on your hands. So this helps to loosen all those up. Rub the back of your hands. Nice massage between the fingers. Okay, now brush your hands like this, like you're brushing lint or dust off of your hands. Fling your hands like this, as if you're flinging water off of them. And since we're doing this, let's practice the Qi energy ball. Put your hands to, uh, close together like this. Keep your hands relaxed and loose. And just open them just a bit, like that. And hold the palms close to each other, to each other almost touching. And see if you can feel some kind of energy between your hands. Who can feel energy between their hands? Okay. Now open it up a bit and then breathe in. And then breathe out and slowly put your hands together as you breathe out. Breathe in. Keeping the relaxation in your hands. Now, who can feel some kind of energy? Now, move it around like this, like there's a ball there. Move it the other way so you can feel your hands. What do you guys feel in your hands? Is it heat? You feel tingling? You guys feel some kind of numb energy or electricity or magnetism? We feel that. That's great. So that's the beginning of feeling Qi energy. By the way, if you just got here, make sure you tap the button, click the like, tap the screen, give me some more likes so that we can get this out to more people. Okay, let's do that for a little bit longer. So open up, breathe in, and then breathe out and slowly move them together. Try to feel it through every finger, through your thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky. Feel the heat spread throughout both of your hands. If you feel one hand is hotter than the other, then see if you can just mentally turn up the heat on the other hand. So just relax the other hand so you get the same amount of heat in both hands. Breathe in, breathe out. So by this time your hand should get pretty hot. If you're not feeling the heat in your hands, probably your hands are too tense. 
or your body's too tense, so just loosen up. Shake it, rub it a little bit more, relax it, and start over. Now as you're doing this, it also helps to imagine that there is actually a ball of energy and it's bouncy. It's like a balloon. So when you open up, there's pressure between your hands. There's pressure pushing out because it's a balloon and when you press in, there's pressure also pushing out. So the, heart, so the closer you, you hold it, then the more pressure there is. Now your hands should feel quite saturated with heat. So many people get to this point and say, wow, I can feel it, I can feel my chi energy. What is it and what do I use it for now, okay? Well, one way, easy way to use it for is just breathe it in. Now you created this ball. Now imagine you're just condensing it more and more and more and now actually close it and condense it into a tiny, tiny little ball. And then you want to squeeze it. And then while you squeeze it, breathe it in to your body. Really forcefully like this. And as you breathe it in, imagine it's coming through your hands, to the palms, into your arms, into your chest, and down into your belly. Okay? That's why you might match it. So breathe in, breathe out. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Condense the ball and then breathe it in through your hands and arms into your belly. Now you can do it in one motion. So breathe, uh, breathe in, squeeze, do it three times. Squeeze even more. Condense even more. Condense even more. Condense, finally, close it, condense, breathe it out. Make it really, really tight. Condense that ball inside your palms and then breathe it in. Breathe it to your belly. Okay, and if you do that, you should feel the heat kind of spreading out throughout your entire body. So that's good. So that's a good general chi activation uh, and healing uh, that you can do for your body. Now, if there's a specific place you want to put it, let's say you want to put it onto your head, you can do that same thing. And now you breathe in through there. Okay, or it's the shoulder, you can breathe it in. So you're putting your hand here, you're breathing the chi, you, you just how you just accumulated the chi in your hands, you put, place it on your shoulder and breathe it through your shoulder to your belly. Okay, so you can put it anywhere. You can put it on your belly, right, to, to uh, enhance that, uh, the, the chi energy center here in your belly. And breathe it into your belly. So there's different places you can breathe it into, okay? So, that's a good place to start, especially when you wake up in the morning. One good thing you can do is you can rub your hands together, do some chi energy balls that I just did, condense the energy and breathe it into your eyes. So cover your eyes like this and breathe it into your belly through your eyes. And then cover your ears. And then you can cover your, your nose, your mouth, and then cover the back of your head like this, the back of your neck. That tends to awaken those uh, energy centers uh, throughout your face and you actually feel more awake when you do that. You can do the top of your head like this. And that helps you uh, wake up. It helps you increase your awareness and it wakes you up. It wakes you up mentally. Okay? 
something really good to do in the morning. Okay. Next, what I like to do is I like to do some um, brushing. So we're going to do some brushing on your forehead, brushing on your scalp. Just using the fingers, brushing of your ears, go around the ears like this, down your jaw, brushing your cheek, brush underneath your eyes gently, eyebrows, brush down your sinuses, top of your lip, do a smile and brush like this to your ear, brush your jawline. Okay, this is great for looking great like me <laughs> as you get to get that blood circulation through your face and you'll get beautiful skin just like me and you use cheek oils and you get get skin like me now you get uh do uh your neck like this your neck shoulders Back of the shoulders, your traps. Back of the shoulders. Down your middle finger. You can do it like this. So I'm going like this down my middle finger, but I'm gonna hang my, my arm down so it helps the energy flow downwards through my arm. Now down the thumb. And then obviously, uh, you should be breathing while you're doing this, so breathe in. It helps with sending that energy and releasing those blockages every time you brush. Now the pinky. Now this hand. Thumb. Pinky. And then the palm side. Now down the armpit. Down the middle of your chest. Down your throat too, like this, and then down your chest. Down the side of your chest. And just to your belly, you can use your thumb like this down the middle of your belly. And dig in like a massage. Now down your waist, past your hips. Don't forget the back. For the back, I just use the back of my hands like this and brush downwards. Or I can use the palms like this down the side. <laughs> if you feel like gassy, that's good because now you're releasing stuck energy. Okay, to the back, past your butt, past your hips, up below, behind your legs, side of your thighs, inside your thighs, on the top of your thighs, past the knee. Use both hands behind and past the shins and the calves. And then uh, shins and calves and then the feet. Top of the feet, side of the feet, top of the feet, side of the feet. And then do some stomp. And when you stomp, stand straight when you stomp and then just <sighs> relax everything and let it drop. <sighs> 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 Okay. 
okay? Now that's the brushing. Now we're gonna do some padding. So just you can use your fingertips, just lightly pat. You're patting with a direction, so you're going pat with a direction. Like that. So you're patting with the direction backwards to your ears. Patting slightly with your fingertips. Patting lightly with your fingertips on the head, going backwards. We are doing Qigong. Did you guys see the, uh, the title of it? It says Qigong Meditation, that's what we're doing. Okay. Pat, 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 pat. Down your jaw, up your jaw. Past the ears, behind the ears. Down your throat. Down your vagus nerve. The thyroid, you can tap a little. Just remember that tapping, you're not tapping going in, you're tapping, brushing, and tapping at the same time. You see what I'm doing? They're little brushes, but they have a little force to them, the fingers. Now, when you get to the shoulder, you can do a little harder and use your whole palm. This is not sensitive, so you can hit as hard as you feel comfortable with. The harder, the better, actually. And at the same, at the same time, remember you're doing breathing with every hit. Down the same meridians we did. Down the middle finger. Down the thumb. Down the pinky. Down the palm. Down the arm. Down the middle finger. What I'm doing is I'm going down the sequentially incrementally down like this. Okay, do some big brushes and then relax. Make sure you're loose, loose while you're doing this. You still need to keep loose and relax. You don't want to tense. If you, if you start to tense because you're hitting yourself so hard and it's painful, then just relax. And maybe don't hit yourself so hard. Okay, we get to the hand. We can do each finger. Do each finger. Um, index finger, middle finger. A lot of tension gets stuck in the wrist, so you can do the wrist, just the wrist. Go all the way around, 360. Okay, so I spent a lot of time on the arms because I've been doing a lot of punching and then arms get really, really stiff. Uh, and they get a little bit sore, especially the wrists, right? Uh, and the shoulders. So, um, or sometimes I don't have elbow problems mostly. My wrists get tired and my shoulder. Uh, so it's good to really loosen those up with this uh, exercise. And at the same time, you're, you're developing a lot of, lot of um, uh, musk, uh, skeletal strength. So when people project block, 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 they hit, they hurt themselves when they, when they, when they, uh, when they touch my arms, okay? Uh, or you can use elbow blocks, right? And that's really devastating when they hit an elbow. They don't want to punch you anymore. Okay, let's continue. So now we're doing chest. You can do short lines like this to start.
Now you're gonna do bigger ones. Now you don't have to do it as hard as I eat me. If you're not actually doing combative sports, you don't need to hit as hard as me. You just do light ones, relaxed ones, but I'm training combative sports, boxing, so I'm developing more um, uh, defense. So when I do get hit, it doesn't hurt. Okay, so in the back, be careful. The back don't hit so hard as your kidneys are there. Just uh, lightly. Okay, and then go down, go down the back, side of your legs, inside the legs, knees, calves, shins and calves. Okay, and the feet. Top of the feet, side of the feet. Okay, I'll do some stomping. Really let it go. And imagine shaking off and um, just stomping and shaking off any kind of blockages or stuck energy. Imagine going into the ground. See how much you can relax with each stomp. So you take a deep breath and then see how much we can relax it, but still keep straight. So the faster you can relax, the better. I mean, and we we're talking milliseconds, right? So you can go from a state of uh, just a little bit of tension to instant relaxation. That is the key to, um, if you study internal power, that's the key to internal power. How it's, it's the speed in which you can relax, okay? It doesn't look like you're doing anything, but you can feel it. So with each breath, you feel yourself relaxing more, your butt, your muscles relaxing more. Even though I'm standing straight, my muscles are relaxing more and more. Just imagine that your skeletal structure is like the frame, and then all the meat around it is the meat, and you're just relaxing the meat, and the meat kind of just keeps hanging and and um, relaxing. It, it's, you want to uh, imagine they are melting, melting or, or washing, uh, down that frame so your frame stays about the same you can see me just dropping maybe a half an inch to an inch with every breath but then i'm the sensation i want is to have that meat melting off the bones with every breath i take out if you just got here make sure you tap the stream give me some more likes i don't see enough likes on this Deep breath, and then relax. Let that everything melt off. Okay. Now, what helps to do that is you can practice this a lot. We did this last time. It's called a Grand Tai Chi. Helps you do that melting sensation. So what I'm doing is I bring my hands up above my head, and then let it fall down, and then I open my hands up words I can look up to, and then gather and it lets it fall. So I'm making this torus or this donut with my hands. And then I'm creating this energy field around me. Mm. 
Now, as you bring the hands or let the fall, you don't bring your hands down, you're like letting it fall. You're just letting it fall. Then as it falls, just imagine that you're washing, imagine you're washing yourself with it, with this energy. And it washes every part of your body sequentially from head to toe. You know, your eyes relax, your ears relax, nose, mouth relaxes, jaw relaxes, neck relaxes, shoulders relax, chest relax, abdomen relax, guts relax, hips relax. You can wiggle it a little bit, hips. If you wiggle it, it helps you feel it, right? If you wiggle it or, or move it around, it helps you to feel it. So feel it, relax. Sometimes when you stand still, it's hard to feel it if you're not good at it. But if you wiggle it, just relax, you can help it relax more. Shoulders, chest, solar plexus, belly, hips, legs, thighs, knees, calves, and the feet, wiggle your toes. So if you move it, it helps you to, helps you to sense it because some people, if you're a beginner, have, uh, may have a uh, you know, you may not have as much sensitivity of the energy going through your body. So if you wiggle it, then it helps. But once you get used to it, then you can just imagine it and just sense it with your with your mind. Uh, I think in lots of meditation practices, you know, you can close your eyes and you imagine your awareness going to somewhere. Let's say that you want to imagine your awareness going to your hand. So you want to feel all the sensations in your hand, it's just front of you, just close your eyes. And then really feel every little pit, bit of your hand, feel the fingertips, feel the nails, feel the knuckles, every little knuckle. So you go and scan each part. So I don't have time to do this today, but if you want to increase the awareness of your body, start with your hands because we use our hands all the time. And we have a lot of senses, uh, you know, I mean, we touch things, we, we, we type with it. So our fingertips and our hands have a lot of sensitivity. So it's a good place to start. To train your awareness of your body start your hands and then later on you want to move up the hands to your forearms try to feel like the skin and if you move over it you should feel if you do the, the hand uh the energy ball if you move your hand over you should start to feel a little bit tingly wherever you move your hand another way to do it is use these two fingers and then point at the arm and you should feel a little bit tingly your hairs might even stand up on end when you move your fingers back and forth in your hand so that's a good place and you can move, flip the hand and so do that through your whole body, maybe after this, when you have time. I know it takes a long time, but once you get scanned through your entire body, every piece of your, every inch, then you're more aware of anything that happens uh, on the body. And the awareness is a really good beginning to start doing the Qi um, energy meditation to take you to a, never, uh, to a new level, take you to a too much higher level, okay? So for many people, like you look at you look at these things. Oh, I'm just moving my hands. Like there's no exercise here. There's no physical benefit. But that's not the point. The point is it's all internal. It's all about the uh, how the mind connects with the body. It's about how the senses and the emotions that you feel and the intentions that you have and being able to direct your awareness throughout your body to make it do things. For example, and this is how you can self heal is you can sense tensions to your body, squeeze it, then release that tension. And basically that's how you self heal. There's a lot of pain that you can remove from your body by just sim simply doing that. And um, whereas, you know, most of the conventional ways, they just talk about what's outside because you can physically see, oh, if you have a shoulder pain, do a shoulder exercise as well. A lot of times that just aggravates the pain and, and makes the problem worse because you're, you're concentrating that uh, blockage. You're, you're reinforcing the blockage that was there in the first place to create that pain. So yeah, you may feel stronger, your muscles getting bigger, but what's actually happening is you're reinforcing the blockage that's there that caused the pain in the first place. So what you need to do is you need to go inside internally to release that blockage. And that may not require a, like lifting things or increasing your strength, your muscle strength. What's required is you to release the internal energetic blockages. And the only way you can do that is to go inside with your mind, okay? And that's why we're teaching, that's what Qigong is. All right, and what's more powerful, the mind or the body? 
Who can tell me what's more powerful, the mind or the body? Well, obviously it's the mind because the mind has no limit and the body tends to have a physical limit, right? The mind has no limit. So when you can use your mind to do certain things to your body, it's just a lot more efficient and it's a lot more effective and, and it's less effort. It's actually less physical effort. Right? How many people can work out all day? Some people can, they can work out eight hours a day, but not most people can't. So, um, but most people can breathe properly for hours a day. Most people can learn to meditate for a long time. Um, and obviously with chi coils, that helps the process a lot, make it a lot easier, even automatic. If you use chi coils, you're getting, you're meditating as long as your chi coils are on. So if you have your chi coils on 24 hours, seven, that means you're meditating 24 seven. That means you're energy, uh, enhancing your energy. You're removing blockages. You're increasing your life force every moment of the day, as long as you have your chi coils on. So, so that's why I created this technology because before I did these practices and they were helpful. But then um, I needed to go deeper. I needed to get take it to the next level. So I started to develop technologies to help me do it all the time. So all the time, as long as I have this technology on, I'm basically doing this. And then while you're doing these exercises along with the technology, then this just takes it. That's just a powerhouse and just, you know, makes you basically superhuman. I'm 43 and, I'm, and people think I in my, in my 20s. I'm competing uh, in uh, August 31st um, in amateur boxing and people say, and I'm beating people half my age because I'm faster and stronger than them. So, so um, anyway, just, uh, I want you to open your mind about Qigong energy and how it works and how you can transform your life with it. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's get back to the exercise. So we did the padding and we did the brushing. Now, uh, what we do is we do focus more on the breathing, okay? Uh, this time, what we're gonna do is focus breathing on different parts of the body. So let's focus on breathing with our hands, okay? We did breathing with our hands, right? Let's do, go, go back there. So breathe with your hands, breathe in, and then out. Just imagine you have these two little, um, balls here, little tiny, like a little marble in the middle of your hands. And when you breathe in, the energy comes in through there and into your belly. Okay, so breathe in. And then when you breathe out, the energy goes out of those little tiny marbles. So when you breathe in, you relax your hands. When you breathe out, you kind of open your hands a little bit, not all the way. You breathe in, you relax your hands. You breathe out, you open your hands a bit. Focusing the energy in the little marble. Your hands should feel really hot. Now, another thing you want to do is to um, now breathe it through your feet, doing the same thing. So just imagine your feet on the ground, right? So when you breathe in, you, your, your feet kind of, your, your feet go like this, you're, it's like sucking up the ground with your toes. So like breathe in. And then when you breathe out, relax the feet, let, let the feet spread out to the ground. These, my hands are showing what your feet are supposed to do. So breathe in, your feet kind of sucks up the ground and then breathe out. Your feet relaxes and spreads out. And it's good to stand. Obviously, uh, it'll be much better if you stand to do this. Um, and with your legs a little bit wider than shoulder width apart.
Now do it with both your hands and feet. If you can see, you can do it. So you're going. Both are sucking in energy, and then relax, and then your feet are spread out, and you open up your palms. Open up the feet and palms. Suck it in. Okay, let's come back to that in a sec. Hand on your heart. Is there cannabis involved? If you want, I'm not using cannabis right now. I don't, I don't use cannabis. So uh, next is, I want you to kind of um, imagine you, you have a tree in front of you and you're kind of hugging the tree. So this is a round thing. And then my chest is kind of round like this. But my back is straight and my spine is pretty straight. Okay, so I'm hugging this tree and I want to hug and kind of sink and melt together with the tree. Like I'm sinking and I'm melting together with the tree. Ah, like I really like the tree and it's really relaxing and I'm just hugging the tree. I don't take any cannabis. CBD, I don't need it. I don't smoke, I don't drink either. Okay, so you hold the uh, tree. Now, as you're holding the tree, what I want you to also imagine is that you're underwater. So if you're underwater, you feel weightless, right? You're just kind of floating there. Your body uh, floats a little bit, so it's weightless. But you're still touching the bottom, you know, you're still on the bottom of the ocean or bottom of the lake holding this tree. So start to feel that sensation, how that feels like. So if you feel like you have two forces happening, so you have the gravity that's pulling you down, right? And then you have the water that's kind of lifting you up at the same time. So you feel like you're floating there weightless. So try to get that feeling when your arms start, your fingertips, feel that weightless list, feel that complete relaxation. You know, when you're floating in water, you can just completely relax. You don't need to support your own weight. Try to get that sensation in your fingertips. Just completely relax. You can bounce a little bit, move a little bit to feel like you, you're, you're suspended in water. Now, if your arms get tired, just put your hands, arms down, shake them a little bit so they're not that tired. Like you hold your, your tree a little bit lower so it'll be a little easier. Because this may be hard for some people because you have to keep your arms up. But you, know, you can even put your hands all the way down here if your shoulders are getting tired and get that floating sensation. Now, make sure that you do bend your knees a little bit and you want to start up straight and then kind of sink into, slowly sink, sink and melt into a uh, stance where you feel like, okay, I can kind of sit there. I feel like, you know, I can comfortably sit there for quite a long time. That's the, that's the how low you want to go. Okay, when your legs get tired, stand up straight again, take a deep breath and sink back into that seated position. Okay, I'm just dropping a bit, right? So my position is right there. Okay, I just dropped about how long? That's two inches. So I start standing straight. And drop, relax, and then it comes to a point slowly where I feel like, okay, it's kind of, it kind of stops right there, and I feel like I can kind of sit there. So I kind of bounce a little bit there, where there's a little bit of resistance, kind of pushing me back up. That's where I want to be. Same thing with the hands, right? So you drop your hands from from high, and then eventually you want to feel it in front of you, where you feel like, okay. I feel like it's kind of bouncy right there. And that's where you hold your hands. Notice that my elbows are, are heavy. So you want to feel the heaviness in the elbows and feel, make your shoulders are nice and relaxed as well. Okay, so once you get this posture, you seat it there. Now you want to feel like you are underwater. 
and that your whole body is completely weightless. So scan every part of your body, you feel completely weightless. Take some really long deep breaths to help you relax even more. Okay, who here feels really relaxed and they can feel, feel like they're actually underwater and they feel like they don't have any weight? When you can get that sensation, then that's great. Now, since you're underwater, I want you to feel like, you know, when you're underwater in the swimming pool, you can kind of feel the current moving, right? Let's say there's a current on your skin. So if your current, if this uh, water is kind of like flowing naturally from direction to direction, you can feel it moving on your skin. So see if you can use your skin to, to feel and sense the air that's moving around your skin. Okay, if you're outside, this is easier because there will be a breeze or some kind of uh, air movement. But even if you're not, even if you're indoors, feel the air around your skin. Your forearms are a good place to start, your face. Feel the skin. Feel the airflow. Now imagine you are in the water and just imagine you can feel the water flow on your skin. Okay, so when you do, the, you see people doing this in the park, it looks like they're just standing there like almost like sleep, sleepwalking or sleep standing. And it looks like they're not doing anything. But now you know what the intentions are. Like you want to feel that underwater sensation. You want to feel that weightlessness and you want to sense your skin. There's actually a lot going on. It's actually quite entertaining for the mind. It's kind of quite an exercise to do, right? Who agrees with that? Like for people just got here and say, what are you guys, this, what's this guy doing? He's just standing there doing nothing. This is not interesting at all. But the point is for you to have that internal journey through your body and internal exercise of your mind to, to, to imagine those sensations. And what's happening when you imagine those sensations, you're actually unlocking abilities um, that your body has and you're unlocking special abilities that your body has for self-healing. Okay, so let's take a little break because some of you might be tired. But if you can stand like there for 10 minutes without moving and feeling completely relaxed, completely, you know, un unfatigued, right? Not tired. With your arms like this, knees bent, you're doing a really good job. If you can extend that even further, what you want to do is to, as you go into these stances, is to go deeper and deeper, relax more and more and more, feel your body and your muscles melt more and more and more, feel your feet kind of melting into ground while keeping the structure. And you'll be surprised, right? Like you did, you, uh, you, you, you come out of it and say, well, 30 minutes are gone, an hour is gone. I've been standing there, I don't really feel tired. So that's what you want. You want to develop that kind of um, internal strength. So why don't you guys come up with some questions? I'm going to take uh, some questions now while we take a like, little break. Oh, by the way, before we come out of that, this is really interesting to deep meditation. So when you're in really deep meditation, how you want to come out of it is you want to imagine there's a leaf gently falling. So you're just watching this leaf fall, gliding from side to side. Right, there's a leaf falling, gently falling to the ground. And then it finally lands on the ground. And you're watching that leaf. Take a deep breath and then stand up straight, feet together. And then put your uh, hands on your belly. And just now focus your awareness on your belly. Okay, and whenever you're ready, you open your eyes. So, so that's one way to help you kind of gently come out of the meditation. 
I, uh, so that's important too. You need to come out of the meditation more gently so that it stays with you more. Any applications for reversal of gray hair? Uh, you can use our cheek oils, right? Because uh, uh, gray hair could be either could be genetic or just poor circulation to your scalp. So cheek oils help with blood circulation. So that may help you with uh, hair issues. Uh, you feel energy in ten tickling once I saw this video. What's happening? Because I'm doing energy meditation, so you may be sensing it as you're watching this video. Is it okay to do this with a fever? Um, I think so, because a fever is inflammation. So Qigong actually scientifically proven to reduce inflammation. So if you have fever, yes, do this. I think it will be beneficial. Is this good for a good routine for, uh, before I start healing session for someone? Do you have any favorite technique that heals someone else's pain? Yes, uh, absolutely, right? If you're healing somebody, I don't know what kind of healing you do, but Reiki healers, they tend to get tired when they do too many healing sessions. So you need to recharge yourself. This is one, this is one way of recharging your chi energy. Okay, just imagine a tree. How does it accumulate energy? It doesn't move. It just absorbs energy from the sun and water from the ground, right? So that's kind of like what we're doing. We're, we're imagining we're a tree and we're just absorbing energy as we're just kind of swaying back and forth in this um, underwater. And the more relaxed you are, you're kind of opening up all the itchy energy centers. And just standing like this makes you an antenna or like a magnet for attracting chi energy. So exactly. So you, before you heal, I definitely recommend you doing some kind of meditation like this to get um, energized internally. Do you have some favorite technique that heals someone else's pain? You mean energy healing technique? Um, well, how I do it is, um, first of all, you learn how to heal your own pain, right? And how I do it is, let's say you have a shoulder I just showed you earlier, is to accumulate the chi energy and then breathe it through that, that point where you have the pain and breathe it into that point, squeeze that point, and then, and then breathe it into your, uh, into your dantan and then Expel, expel it out forcefully like that. So you squeeze, squeeze it into here, expel, breathe it into the point, squeeze it into, this, into your uh, stomach, breathe it out. So that's how you heal yourself. So when you are uh, healing somebody else, let's say energy healing, that's what I would do. I would basically do that. And then imagine that happening for the person while I'm doing it. So I would put my hands to the person I would breathe in, energy in there. Imagine it's going in there. Then I squeeze my own tummy. Imagine it's going to the person's tummy too. And then blow it out. So basically you're doing the same thing you're doing for yourself, but imagining it's happening uh, for the other person at the same time. That's how I do it. I'm, I'm sure there's many different place, where, ways to do it. You can pull from nature to heal others. Yes, you can. I mean, there's healing energy, uh, uh, unlimited healing energy everywhere so you can tap into that right can you sit and do yes you can uh you can s sit and do it a lot of people sit and do it especially if your legs are getting too tired and you can't keep standing and keep keep relaxed then go ahead if you want to continue you can continue seated then you can continue the meditation without getting distracted by the pain in your legs do i have an online course i do i have one uh Actually, I do. It's for free. So it's called the 30 Day Qigong Challenge. If you go to this website, you guys see this website here, and then you look for 30 Day Qigong Challenge, you can get it for free. Use the Qi. You see that? Okay, now you can see it. Yeah, so it's a free course, and you can, it's, it goes for 30 days. So there's a lot of content, and they give it away for free. So go check it out if you want to learn about that. Okay, let's continue. So that's the, the more of the softer energetic aspect. Now I'm going to move to the, the combative aspects of it because that's what I'm working on. As I said, I'm competing in boxing. So uh, why my hands feel like tentacles? It's probably some, activated some kind of um, sensation or sensitivity in your hands, which is a good thing. So if you feel tingle in your hand, then you're activating some kind of chi energy in your hands. 
Okay, so now we're doing the uh, combative um, aspects to it, or martial arts aspects of Qigong. So interesting thing about Qigong meditation, unlike other kinds of meditation, is that it can be used for healing and can be also used in combat, right? It's the same thing can be used for both things. Okay, it's like a yin and a yang. There's the feminine and masculine, right? There's the uh, energy that can you can potentially use to heal, and you can use the energy potentially to attack and to even destroy something. So, uh, which is different from what most people think of when they think of meditation, right? So now we're going to move on to the uh, the combative aspects of it. Okay, so when you do combative aspects, the one, one major thing that you're going to get from Qigong is your 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 attacks, your punches, your kicks, whatever attacks are going to be is going to penetrate a lot more. Do you understand what that means? For example, um, this, this is your hand, okay? And you want to. There's different ways you can apply force. You can do this. That's called pushing, or you can do this. It's called hitting, right? Uh, or you can do something that's more penetrative. So how do I explain this? Can you see the difference? Okay, let's see if you can see the difference between the three of them. What's the difference between the three? Can anybody tell me? Okay, if you don't know, that's fine, because I don't assume, uh, assume you guys do martial arts. So the first one is the push. This is the minimum penetration. When you push something, there's no penetrating force. Okay, so it doesn't really hurt the person. There's minimal pain, but it does move the person a lot. So if you want to move somebody, then you move them with a push, right? Even though it's with a fist, I'm mainly just pushing the, the target. The second one is, is more like a hit. Okay, it goes pow, pow. So it stings, right? It stings the person and it makes them uh, kind of um, stuns them for, for a second. The third way, is penetrative. So look, notice what I'm doing. I'm kind of making it, uh, and it hurts a lot. So, so what you're doing is actually you are using force and you're driving the force into the target and the pain goes deeper. So it's not that smacking, you know, you smack your hand, it stings a little bit, but then it goes away, right? But if you penetra use penetrating force and you hit it, it really hurts, <laughs> okay? Because it goes deep and uh, it goes deep into your tissues and even into your bone. So which one's best for martial uh, So when you train this uh, Qigong, you train to be able to do all three, but most importantly, you train the third one because that's what's gonna do the most damage, okay? Uh, when you're fighting, okay? So when you're doing something, bam, 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 that guy's gonna get hit by jet, oh, oh, oh. It may stun him for a second, kind of be, be annoying, but unless you go Hoom, and do like something that penetrates him, that can actually affect his nervous system or his spine. That's what causes the knockouts, right? That's what causes the, the pain and the knockouts. So, um, so if you're using, so you focus chi in the knuckles when punching, that's kind of like a very uh, surface level way of understanding chi. If you focus the shooting goggles, the okay, short answer yes, but let's say how do you make a gun more effective? Do you just focus on the bullet? No, right? The whole gun has to be designed properly and balanced in the right way to deliver the power through the bullet. And obviously a bullet has to be good too. So when you say, can I just focus chi in the knuckles? Then that's like saying, can I just focus on a good bullet? But if you don't have a good gun, then that bullet's not gonna work that well either, okay? So what you need is you need, yes, you need to focus chi on your knuckles, but don't forget the whole mechanism that your body is generating power with, okay? So you need the whole chain. You need to create the whole chain. The whole system has to work in order to um, generate power using chi energy, okay? In uh, combatively. So uh, on the whole arm and leg movements. Yeah, well, there's more to, than arm and leg movements. If you go to any boxing coach, they're gonna tell you, yeah, use your legs, use your hips, use your arms, use your rotation. Yes, that's one level, okay, 
of understanding how to deliver power, but there's another level on top of that, which is internal force, internal power that many people don't actually develop unless they've been fighting for 10 or 20 years. Um, then they start to develop it naturally because they've been fighting for so long, but there's actually, you know, this is back from, it comes from thousands of years of um, education through, you know, Chinese martial arts, and it's all built into it. And many people kind of uh, make fun of it and uh, because they say, oh, Tai Chi is so slow, but the point of Tai Chi is to uh, develop these attributes. Uh, and the, the reason why the Tai Chi people are losing to all, all the MMM fighters is because they're not trained to apply them. They're just trained for the internal, to develop the internal trap attribute, but they haven't trained for the, for the combative aspect, like the actual techniques and the skills and, uh, and the strategy and uh, to, to, to actually make it use but we just want to fight. So what I'm doing is, is I'm, I want to combine the two, right? Yes, you know, I, I, I'm training in uh, competitive, combative sports, all right? And also I'm applying the Qigong principles uh, for internal power. And right now I'm the hardest hitting person in my class. Uh, I'll probably hit the same as the guy who's 230 pounds in my class and I'm 150 pounds. So how can you hit way above your weight? How do you, you know, punch above your weight class? That is where internal power comes in because you can only train your muscles so much before you get tired. You can only be so strong. You can only be so fast, right? I'm not saying I'm strong or I'm, I'm fast uh, as a professional. I'm just an amateur, but if you have, basically there's two ways to go, right? You can go, the external way or you can do the internal way they both kind of come out to the same result but if you can combine both things then you can get there a lot faster does that make sense okay that's why i'm doing this stuff okay so uh what is i doing so basically i'm gonna use the same principle we just practiced but you apply it to like a, an attack okay let's say we're doing a jab okay this is a jab boom boom now okay. Now, I'm going to get in the same stance. Remember the stance we did? I'm just going to go sideways a little bit, okay? And instead of holding my arms up here, I'm going to hold one arm up here, and I will hold one arm right here. This is my guard, and this is my jab, okay? Now I want to practice the same thing that I did earlier. Take a deep breath, and then relax and melt the whole body while keeping this structure, okay? Remember we did this and kept our own structure like this? Relax and keep my whole structure. So everything relaxes, your elbow relaxes, shoulders relax, chest relaxes, feet relax, legs relax, your back is still straight, you have the structure. Okay? Now, I want you to imagine you're underwater. So you're underwater and everything is starting to be weightless. So you may feel like you kind of like swaying a little bit because you're underwater. So right now I'm imagining I'm underwater. I'm completely relaxing. That's why you can see I'm kind of swaying a little bit. Now I'm gonna feel the wind or the air currents on my skin. And particularly I'm gonna focus it in my hands. So I'm gonna feel the air current in my hands or around my hands. So loosen up your hands to do that. Now, when you do this, you're not holding the fist really tight. You're actually holding like it loose like this, okay? I know, I know, the boxing teacher says, don't punch with a loose hand. Well, for beginners, obviously, you don't do that. You punch with the fist, with a closed fist, but once you get to a higher level, you punch with actually a loose hand, an open fist, okay? This is called an open fist. Imagine you're holding a little marble in there. That's why you should be. Okay, so you're underwater. Everything's melting. You can wiggle it if you're getting tense. Wiggle it and then rest and, and then take it, you know, stand up straight again and then sit back into that position again. Actually, I'm going to do this punch instead. So this one's easier because your, your elbow is lower. So it's more natural for this. Okay, so vertical punch. Okay, so sinking. And your stance should be 50-50, so you should feel equal distribution of weight on both feet. So don't lean forward, don't lean backwards. It should feel like you're just 
just like this but now we just extend the one hand out and put one hand here so do that again take a deep breath and then relax everything shoulders arms elbows chest hips legs knees calves and then feet and your feet relax remember we did that exercise breathe in and then relax the feet do that with your feet okay Okay, so now we're underwater. You can feel the energy. I mean, feel the water, uh, the current of water on your skin. So feel it on your skin. Now focus it on your hands. Feel the current of water in your hands. Now you can feel the current of water inside your hands too, because there's water inside your hands since you're underwater. So feel that current of the water inside your hands and around your hands. Now focus it on the hand that you have extended out. So the one that you're punching with, just feel the water around that hand or the airflow around that hand. Relax more. Relax more. Okay, so if you can just do that for who knows how long, then you're training internal power for this punch. Okay, now before, let's take a little break. Shake it off because you might be tired holding that arms up for so long. So just loosen it up. Now the next step is to do the breathing, okay? So I want you to breathe in and then focus the energy into your Tummy here. So breathe in your, to your tummy. And as I breathe out, I'm going to imagine, I remember that exercise we did, breathe in, suck it in through your, your feet. And then as I breathe out, I'm going to express it. So I'm going to basically re relax and drop and my feet spread out. And then I'm going to imagine that the energy is coming out of my hand here. So breathe in, suck it in. Then, Breathe in, suck it in through your feet, and then relax and express it out to your hand. Uh, I feel very strong energy from this video. How? Because I have a strong aura and my chi energy is strong. The force is strong with me. That's what they say. Hi, Davis. Is wrong if I want to live. Hi, David. Is well, if I want to dive along, I don't know what he's talking about. So breathe in. Now, when you're breathing out, imagine that there's energy coming from your your tummy, and then through your arm and out out your hand, out your fist. So we're doing exactly what we did with the feet breathing thing earlier, but now instead of the hands expressing out like this, I'm expressing out with my fist. So as you're expressing out, instead of opening up your hands as you express, you're actually closing your hands a little bit. So as you express, you're, you're closing your hands a little bit. You're, you're, you're squeezing a little bit. Squeeze a little bit. This nice and slow. Okay, 
coordination takes a takes a lot of coordination too. As you're breathing in, you're sucking in. Are you pulling up with your feet? As you're breathing out, you're relaxing your feet, but you're tensing your fist. Okay, now let's practice the other hand. So it's gonna be like this. You punch it like this, right? With the other hand. So you can do this. Well, let's do this one. This one is more applicable to internal martial arts. So. Another thing you can do is actually, um, do different, uh, do it along this, along the line of attack. So let's say this is the punch, right? Bam. You're starting here, for example. So you do a little, little part. So you breathe in. So the little bit, little bit at a time. Okay, that's another technique. Well, let's do a simple one first. So now we're doing this one with the with the, with the back hand. So this is the front hand. This is the back hand. Front hand, back hand, right? Back hand and going punch like this, right? So. If this is the full movement, so I'm just gonna end up right here. So I go go underwater, breathe out, I'm underwater, every time I breathe out, I squeeze my hand a little. Now let's try to feel all the uh, things I talked about. I feel underwater. Feel the underwater. Okay, let's stand here first and go back. Let's take a step back. Um, in the position, feel yourself underwater first, suspended. Okay, now that you got yourself underwater, feel the water flowing around your body. And then now feel the airflow around your body, inside your hands as well. Now focus the energy uh, and you breathe in. Focus on your tummy. And then when you breathe out, relax your feet. And then tighten your fist a little bit. Breathe in. Feel your belly. Relax the feet. And then tighten your fist a little. Continue while keeping the underwater sensation. And you can just focus on the water around your fist. You keep it simple.
All right, so doesn't look like I'm doing much, but I'm training internal arts. Okay, now we're gonna do uh, like a combination and a little bit more movement. So instead of just these tiny ones, we're gonna build it into the full motion, okay? So we'll go. One long breath. Still underwater. So not feeling safe in your own body, shifting into unconscious realities without realizing. Uh, just centering techniques. So if you do any any frequency for centering or balance, that will help you. So use the regenerate frequency. That's good for that. There's a um, there's a uh, balance frequency in Qi Energy AI. You can use that. That's very useful. Um, but just using Qi calls in general will help you center. Just generally help you center and become more uh, safe, feel safer in your body. Okay, now we do something more advanced. So as we we're gonna sink and relax your feet as we punch one hand, as we punch the other hand, we're gonna rise and breathe in as we punch the other hand. So we sink with out one hand as we punch out. And then we roll our eyes and breathe in as we punch the other hand. Try to keep underwater. Now reverse. So we're going to go down with this one and then rise with this one. Keep underwater. Another point about being underwater is you want to leave the water on as disturbed as possible. And imagine that every movement you make is making ripples and you want to minimize the amount of ripples you're making with your movements. You want to have minimal splashing of ripples. 
So no ripples. So you have to move in through the water very slowly in order not to disturb the water. That's why you have to be completely relaxed and your motions have to be completely smooth. Okay. Now, a good thing to do at the end of the session is do this rocking motion. Yes, I have the Chico. Can you tell which frequency program, which is good for Dealing with shame, is removed negative energy, um, anything for confidence. We have confidence ones. Uh, we have um, any of the centering ones I just told you about. Those are good. But I always start with remove negative energy. Luck boost is good. And anything for confidence. Okay, so that's the end of the session. Good idea to loosen it up a little bit, bounce around a little bit. Now you do some stretching. Reach up like this. Look all the way up. Do it again. One stretch, second stretch is this one. You push up with one hand, push down with the other hand. Now this one, like I'm drawing a bowl, so it looks like this. The other side. This one, point your thumbs backwards like this, and then look to one side. Look over your shoulder. Round your back. Breathe in. Look over the other shoulder.
Try to try to point your thumbs as high as you can. Hands pointing together, point to, uh, fingers pointing towards each other. Round your back. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Open up again. Look over your shoulder. Okay, now uh, see so you can touch your toes. Step back out. Hold your kidneys on the back like this and then squeeze it down your legs as you go and touch your toes. One more time. Okay. And then uh, do this one. So look at the camera or look ahead of you. Uh, make your eyes really angry. Angry eyes, okay? Angry gaze. Try to make the angriest face you can you can muster. Angry, and then punch ahead of you. Huh. And then shout. Huh. Angry punching helps with uh, helps with the anger, releases anger, and then um, do some bouncing like I showed you earlier. When you bounce, try to feel your back. These back muscles bouncing, shaking. These back muscles here. You can do your boxing bounce. Up and down. The alley shuffle. The alley shuffle. Don't get in the way. Okay. And then that's it. Uh, by the way, today is probably, I think t tomorrow or today is the last day for the Qi Coil offer. We're giving away free vouchers for frequencies when you buy Qi Coils. So if you buy any Qi Coil Mini or higher, you get up to $500. More than that, you get the Qi Coil Aura uh, uh, frequency voucher. So you can use the voucher to buy additional frequencies you can use with the Qi Coil. Thanks for coming on. I think I'm going to do these. Uh, a couple of times a week. So I do these on my off days. I train hard for three days of the week. So on my rest days, I do this Qigong, which I think works pretty good because this is not physically demanding. So I'm building, I'm building both at the same time, right? I'm building my physical uh, attributes, right? And I'm building my internal power of attributes. So they both work together. And I think it's working out pretty good. Yeah, uh, hopefully somebody will record it when I do the fight. I was gonna show you something else, but I don't think I have it. So people use these boards, rebreakable boards. Kind of for testing whether you have enough impact to break the board, right? So, break them like that. So this is the same as a wooden board. 
except it's re-breakable. If you miss that, I'll show you again. <laughs> so usually people have to break them like this, right, with the punch. But when you have internal power, I'm using my left hand, my weak hand, you can just break them with just all that stuff. So I'm underwater, loose, I suck it in, and then I, I, I hit the board, right? So I can break it like that. So when you have internal power, you see, you see what I just did there? If you slow it down, it's exactly what I just practiced, this motion. Right? And I do it in such a short distance because I use the expansion and the, and the compression. You see right, left hand. Hey, I did it with my left hand. There you go. Takes more practice. So that's a demonstration of internal power. You don't need, you don't need to wind up to generate force to break something. You can just do it that with a with a little twist or with a little snap. And also, I'm not putting the board on a holder. I'm just holding it myself. Come like that. That's usually harder to do than. Uh, and putting it on like a board holder or somebody holding it like this for you so you have a lot of leverage. Okay, if you have questions, uh, make sure we, you um, you uh, send me a direct message or just message a support team. Uh, who here applied to our leadership volunteer program? Anybody? Unfortunately, we closed that off, but we're going to be doing a, um, a, a summit. It's like a full day summit, most likely on a Sunday. It'll be a full day of training with the uh, leaders who will be teaching various things throughout the day. And we might do that for two days. So if you did get that, we can send out another email for the, if you qualify for that, uh, pre-qualify, we're going to send out an email telling you what the next steps are in order to, um, in order to be, you know, join, in order to join our team as, a, as one of our leaders. If you really tried, I bet you can flick it with your finger. No, and I'm not that good yet. I haven't chained my fingers. That's that's probably five times harder with your fingers than, than with your palm. No, that's really hard to do. And it's not something I'm focusing on to use my fingers for attacking because I'm using I'm doing boxing. So I'm not going to be using my fingers much, but mo I'm just using my knuckles. I can't even use my palm because that's not allowed. I can use my palm to push, but I can't I can't strike with the palm. Uh, in boxing, so I'm just focusing on the on the knuckles mostly and the fist, right? Just focusing on that. All right, so thanks for coming by. I hope you guys have a good rest of the day, and I'll see you next time. Use the chi and prosper.